Hey guys, it's me Larry Yellow, and to do this fun show episode review and completing my Merman Boy Kaboy episode marathon. Yeah, this is the 18th episode. We're almost at the final one, the 18th sequel in the franchise. It's Appointment TV. Okay, this is a season 11 DVD, but there's no actual Appointment TV episode DVD. But yeah, it's in this DVD, and uh, I've rewatched this episode a bunch of times before I did the Merman Boy Kaboy reviews review thon. Yeah last year and um back then this one was probably one of the worst ones in season 11 because this was most probably the, one of the more least interesting ones i mean that's this season had a lot of really good episodes like uh which one are the iconic ones there's the legend of bikini bomb that's a really good one we got scavenger pants another good one that doodle dimension really good one cherry box gary uh um goons on the moon my leg, bottle burglars. Yeah, we got a lot of iconic ones in the season. But uh, Pokemon TV was never one that clicked to me. It's just kind of a whatever, just thrown into the season. I thought this episode was kind of a worse version of uh, some really good episodes like Walking Small and The Abrasive Side. Yeah, out of the ones that were special tries to be like saying no, this is probably one of the worst ones. Not really a bad episode, just kind of a me in middle of the road ones. It's um, a good one, but it's not really that great. It's kind of close to being a, a man one, but yeah. So anyway, that's what this episode about. So SpongeBob is about to get ready for it. the uh, sequel to part one of the, cur of the case of the Curious Cliffhanger, or Curse of the Curious Cliffhanger, whatever. Uh, you guys comment down below and tell me if what's the real answer, but yeah. Anyway, so he's getting ready for the sequel to the famous episode that he's ready for to watch so you save the episode on like a on like a record whatever and he has a VHS yeah um yeah this is definitely like a 90s episode this, this episode probably takes place in the 90s because now we don't use the VHS anymore we use DVD so yeah oh by the way if you actually look in the VHS I actually noticed there's actually a Krusty Krab chain video of VHS so that's the rest for the Easter egg hunters yeah if you're gonna ask Easter egg hunt episodes of Spongebob right now, especially the modern ones, there's a lot of references right now, like Plankton, Plankton goes to the boot, Plankton, Plankton gets the boot, whatever the episode's theme is, or Karen's fires. Yeah, this one also has a reference to a classic episode that everybody loves. Yeah. Anyway, so, so Spongebob leaves the house getting ready for the episode um, to premiere, like at nighttime, so he's uh, having a really slow day at work. So it's, um, End of the shift, so he runs out of the crazy crab. But Mrs. Puff um, approaches him and then asks for him to fix a tire. He tries a bunch of tools, but they don't work. So he decides to make himself as a tire, so Mrs. Puff drives. And then SpongeBob gets back to being normal after Mrs. Puff drives back home. Yeah. So, anyway, so SpongeBob um, runs back home. But then uh, Patrick asks him to help him out because uh, he lost his rock, which is not really weird. Okay. Um, I guess this is sort of like a build-up to shell games because turns out the whole shell was actually a turtle. Yeah. So anyways, I guess the, I guess the turtle Tony actually did the... Uh, was alive during that part, but yeah. So anyways, they find the rock and then uh, Patrick Lee accidentally leaves it as Spongebob. So he runs back home by himself, but the, Sandy asks him to do a favor and then uh, he avoids the Sandy and then uh, Mr. Krabs, Larry, a bunch of other people ask him. That's very pretty weird. After Squidward, SpongeBob is immediately approached by the Shady Shoals people. Like, what? How did he end up there in the old people place after getting to Squidward? And uh, how did he get to the Flying Dutchman part after getting as a traffic guy? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty weird plot hole. And in, in the montage sequence, so SpongeBob, after tons of times working with these people, and he's about to go inside, but the key is um, he forgot to. I forgot where his keys were, and then um, I think the the soda flies whatever off Gary, and then it hits like a, a, a TV and whatever the house goes on fire, whatever, and then SpongeBob cries about it, and then yeah, his friends go over and then ask him what the corner is wrong. So SpongeBob tells him that um, his house burned, and he can't watch the sequel episode that he's really waiting for. So Sandy decides to fix everything. It's sort of like what happens there in the last episode, Yes Men, and the ending of No Place at Home School and Serial Offender. I don't know why, but that this ending reminds me of those two episodes. 
So this is why I put this episode in the Marianne Marco Boy Marathon, the ending and the uh, dimension of um, a sponsor mentioning about the Marianne Marco Boy episode he's looking forward to. So yeah, that's why I'm including this in the marathon, not the gym. And Spongebob uh, is uh, pushed by Sandy to go to like this play, whatever. So they decided to do this this play on the episode that he's looking forward to. I was wondering who told him about this. Uh, did Gary watch the episode? Did Patrick watch the episode before Spongebob? I'm assuming it's Patrick, not Gary, because how can Gary even like uh, watch an episode? Oh, right, right. Not for Gary. He watched like a... Uh, a Western episode on TV, so I guess he can. Um, I guess he watched it. From, not Patrick, but whatever. But whatever. We have two spot suspects for for who told Sandy how the episode that plays out. So, anyways, they play the episode. They uh, play out what happened in the episode. They uh, sometimes Larry forgot the lines, and then the episode that uh, ends on us. Uh, everyone uh, like I uh, sing. I think they remember Marco by theme song, whatever. Anyways, yeah. I know some of the costumes that they're wearing are, are from previous episodes. Some are from Mermaid Marco by 5, I think, and some are from Mermaid Pants, yeah. Oh, and by the way, Gary's just the dirty bubble, as a dirty bubble, which is pretty good. Uh, decision for Gary, uh, you like that? Old Man Jenkins comes from uh, at the very end of the episode. They, everyone gets spooked by it except for SpongeBob. And then uh, all he wants it to be in the place. So SpongeBob decides to let him be Mermaid Man. And he flies off, and the episode ends. Overall, what do I think of Appointment TV? Definitely one of the worst in season 11. Uh, I just thought this one was just kind of meh. I also, there's some parts I actually did like, which eventually gave this episode a 7.5 or 7, well, 10, whatever. Uh, you'll find out to the ranking video, but yeah. This is definitely one of the better ones from uh, season from the Marion Barclay episodes, but definitely one of the low lows of season 11 because not so much that this one is actually really engaging. I do think um, um, the abrasive side and uh, walking smaller are way better episodes than this one, but this is enjoyable, I guess. Overall, this one gets a um, 8 out of 10. Um, what do you guys think of my, uh, I don't know, not 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, yeah. What do you guys think of my review of Appointment TV? What's your thoughts on the episode? Uh, did you like this episode more than I did? Did you hate this episode? I'm really ready to know your thoughts on this one. Was it one of the best ones of season 11? Was it one of the worst ones? Whatever. Anyways, we're ending off the video right now. And goodbye, guys. By the way, I can't find the episode link, so I suggest you buy this DVD instead and watch it on Nickelodeon. Or watch on Nickelodeon events. Yeah. Anyways, bye, guys.